Hi everyone and welcome to another episode in my Unreal Engine 4 tutorials. In this episode we're going to continue using splines to create a navigational guide. Now what's a navigational guide you are here you ask? So in a lot of open world games especially we have a you can turn on a navigational guide which basically is a little bit of sparkling uh, that leads you the player to the goal. So I've got a little maze here and these sparkles here just show me to the goal. So this is handled by using splines. I've done a very basic mesh that spawns as part of this spline, uh, but you can make it do anything. You can make it particles, you can make it a fancy animated thing, whatever you like. But the process is basically the same, you just change what it spawns. So we're going to create uh, that navigational guide for us here. So let me just delete the one I've previously placed. Okay. And what we do is we're going to go into our folders here and we're going to create a new uh, folder for this tutorial nav guide tutorial and we'll get started in here so to get started we're going to make a new blueprint class and a new actor and i'm going to call this navigational guide and open it up so the way this works we have a spline component and this spline component is going to um, on a certain timer it's going to generate a spline along a path and that path we're going to calculate before we generate the spline and once we've got the spline we'll then spawn a certain number of meshes or whatever you want to spawn uh, indicating to the player visually where to go so what, that's all you need for the component wise on the event graph over here um, we are going to create several, I'm going to get rid of these two, and I'm going to, we're going to create several functions for this. So the first function we're going to do is we are going to create a find path function. And this fu function's purpose is to find the path to this navigational guide. So you basically, when you want the player to find its way to a certain objective or a certain location, you spawn this actor at that location. And then this will now direct the player towards that um, location. So to do that, we're going to use the find path functions. So to find the path, we come out here and type in find path to actor or location synchronously. I'm going to choose find path to actor. I believe it is. Let me just check my other one. Da -da -da. Yes, find path to actor. So find path to actor and the path start will be the location of the player. So we're going to make the, the path start at location of the player, even though we are, it's kind of counterintuitive. We place this uh, actor where their goal is, but we're going to tell it the path to start differently. So the path start will be the get actor location and the target will be the get player character so the path will start at the player and its goal actor will be itself so go from goal actor and get a reference to self okay and from that we're going to get a return value of the path and from there we can get the path points like so and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this find path function here output these path points. So I'm going to click on the find path in, uh, starting uh, block. And on the outputs here, I'm going to click the plus icon. And that's going to spawn the return node. And in there, I'm going to call path points. And the variable type will be a path, uh, no, vector, sorry. Because path points are just vectors. And that will be an array. Hook that up like so. So this whole function is going to find the path and output all the various path points. So the way this works is with a navigational mesh. Once you've got that nav mesh down, this will plot out the points on that path. Okay, so when it changes uh, direction, I'm not. It's hard to explain without visually showing you, but um, hopefully this makes sense. Okay, so it's basically. Point, uh, dropping in 
uh, points along a path to show which way to go. Okay, so I'm going to click compile and we'll make another function. And this one is going to create the spline. So build spline. And this build spline here is going to take those path points as an input. So let's go to inputs and I'm going to call it path points. And I'm going to leave it as a vector of uh, an array of vectors. Now for each one of these, we're going to build, add a spline point to it. So we're going to go for each on here. And the for each loop will go through this array, which is just a list of path points. Go for each one of them and spit out each one as a separate entity. Once we've got each one, we're then going to add a point to that spline. So drag your spline out from the component list. And then from there, we can go add point and you'll see add spline point. Attach that to the loop body and its position will be this array element down so like that. When this is completed, that is then the spline built. So from there, we want this to uh, end. We'll end it's like this, I think. Yeah, I think that's all we have to do for that. Let me double check my previous one. Just build path. Build spline. Yep, that's all there is to that one. Next one, next function is going to be build path. So this build path is going to now take that spline with those path points on it. Uh, so now we've got a spline that follows that path. So now what we're going to do is we're going to drag the spline out and we're going to do a for loop. And the for loop is going to go at certain intervals along that spline and drop a mesh or whatever you want to spawn in. So let's do a for loop. A regular old for loop. And I'm going to make it spawn three items. So I want to, in this last index here, put two. Because this is now going to do three things. It will do it on zero, one, and two. So you get three meshes come out of this. And for each one on the loop body, I'm going to add a static mesh component. And once on that component, where it's selected, I can change what mesh it's going to spawn. So I'm going to spawn a plane. You, again, you can decide what you want it to spawn. I've just done this for sake of time, for me anyway. And need to rotate it because this one's laying flat, so I'm going to rotate 90 degrees there. And with this now in place, we're now going to set the world location of this. Rather than use the relative transform here, we're going to set the world location. So from the return value, oh, from the return value, set world location and now we've got a location we need to plug in so a location will come from this spline so from the spline we're going to get location at distance along spline and the distance we want will be this index here multiplied by a float and that float is the how far apart you want each of these meshes spawning. So I'm going to type in 300. But we need that's not going to be good enough because the first index is going to be 0. And 0 times 300 is 0. So we don't want one spawning on top of the player. Instead, what we want to be doing is spawning uh, one in front of it. So go for the index here and add 1 to it. And now plug that in. And last thing we need to do on this is change it from the local coordinate space to world coordinate space. So that's because we're setting the world location here and towards the, so we want to get the world location of the distance along a spline. So we can drag this along to here and that should do it. Okay, click compile. And once we've done that, we now need to build a clear function which will clear this uh, spline ready for the next iteration so what it does it builds this uh, navigational guide up and after a certain time it wipes it and then builds another one so to do that we need to first of all store these meshes in an array so I'm making a variable down here and I'm going to call this variable um, waypoint list I guess sure why not and the variable list for this will be a static mesh 
component because that's what this is and we're going to make that an array and I'm going to drag this waypoint list out choose get and then from here we're going to add a value and that value is going to come from this add static mesh component like so click compile and we're now done here and we're now ready to do the clear spline so in functions add new function clear spline so once it's built off spline it'll wait a, a, a few moments and then it'll clear it before building another one so on clear spline here we're going to first of all um, clear the spline points so drag your spline out and then from there type in clear spline points and then you're going to drag your array list for your waypoints out and then from there we're going to go clear on that one too like so however this will only clear the array the meshes still exist so rather than clearing it before we do that we need to go through each one of them and remove them from the world so get waypoint list again and we're going to a for each loop and for each one of these we're going to remove it from the world so from array element go destroy component and plug it in we can then drag the completed down to our array clear down here click compile and then go to your event graph so when event begin play occurs at start of the game we're going to set a timer by event and I'm going to set a timer of every one second and make it looping so this will call this event where everyone we plug into here every one second so let's make the event so I'm going to go custom event and I'm going to call build path uh, not build path so um, I'll just do build nav there we go and plug that into there like so and from there we wanted to find the path first then we're going to build the spline and then we're going to build the path then delay it by one second and when it's completed clear the spline okay so it should look like as follows find path build path uh, bi sorry find path build spline build path delay clear spline click compile and then in your world all you have to do is place your navigational guide down wherever you want the player to uh, move to it is important to note this will only work if you've got a nav mesh if you don't have a nav mesh defined path synchronously won't work click play and you should spawn some points in why they're not spawning oh so that didn't work so the reason why is because i forgot something and that is in your build spline when you add a spline point the coordinate space needs to be world as well so click on change that to world because you want to store the world coordinates not the local coordinates of the spline points so back into our game we can push play and our nav guide will now display our little sparkles oh i've got collision on make sure you turn collision off on them so if you're using mesh that is so when we go build path static mesh i'm going to go down to collision and just say no collision play and there's our sparkles they're nothing fancy but they get a the job done you can see they change dynamically based on finding where you are in the maze that I've built and you'll find it the shortest path to that location anyway thank you for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video if you want to see more please check out my channel and other videos i've got there if you want to see other exclusive videos head over to patreon so support me for at least a dollar and you can see loads of exclusive content as well as access our discord and join our growing community of game developers just like these fantastic people have do, have done as well thank you so much for everyone who supported me so far and 
please give us a like, a comment, and subscribe. And don't forget, forget to hit that notify bell to be notified when new videos are released. Thank you very much, and um, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.